is the CEO of Linamar, and she joins us now to talk a little bit more about the state of her industry. Linda, thanks as always for being with us. It's a pleasure. So if I, if I had to ask you to pick one word to describe the state of your business, uh, what would it be, Linda? Yeah, I mean, I guess at the moment, I would say recovery. I mean, we are absolutely in recovery mode right now. We're uh, trying to get our facilities ramped back up. In fact, many of them are already ramped back up uh, quite, uh, quite well. Uh, so it's all about recovery, but also, you know, keeping a pretty close eye on what's going on. I don't want us to get complacent that we're, you know, out of the woods because the other word that's, uh, you know, I think uh, certainly been a big one for 2020 is uncertainty uh, and underestimation. So, you know, we're, we're staying cautious. We're keeping it pretty tight control around costs and cash so that we're, uh, you know, we're prepared for where things may or may not go. But the good news is most of our plants are up uh, and running at, uh, at some pretty good levels of capacity. So that's great to see. Well, and obviously there are some industries where um, management can afford to keep people at home. Uh, in your case, certainly you, you have to have a lot of people at work. And I believe on your conference call, you talked about about 90% of, uh, of, of the workforce getting back um, uh, to, to your facilities. Um, can you just give us an, an idea of how you're thinking about what those numbers look like with, with all this constant talk about what if there's a second wave? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. At the moment, as you've noted, we have oh, actually over 90% of our workforce is now back uh, back at work 100%, which is great to see because, I mean, back in April, May timeframe, uh, you know, we, we had upwards of 16,000 uh, of our people at home not working, which is just a terrible situation. So, uh, I mean, it all is obviously going to depend on demand, consumer demand levels, uh, and where things go with our customers. So in terms of their own facilities and their operations. So our sense is that the safety protocols that have been put in place in our own facilities and certainly uh, in those of our customers have been extremely effective and have really allowed, uh, allowed them to, to create a safe work environment where people are as safe or safer coming to work than not coming to work, which is our goal uh, as well. Uh, so I, I have less of a concern of facilities being shut down because of uh, uh, another wave, because I think that the protocols are, have been created in such a way that if somebody unfortunately did come into the facility with uh, with the virus, that it they would be able to isolate and not uh, infect others. My bigger worry, obviously, is consumer demand, uh, and will we mm. continue to see the demand levels uh, at uh, at the levels that are currently being experienced? So, uh, in North America, demand has been, you know, remarkably resilient, and we didn't go down nearly as much uh, as we did in uh, in Europe and in Asia. Uh, and uh, that, you know, demand is, you know, keeping inventory levels low, which is keeping production levels high, which is uh, good to see. Uh, and China certainly demand is also strong. In fact, just recent forecasts out of industry forecasters have added vehicle production to this year based on that demand. So at the moment, uh, the, the demand feels pretty good, uh, but that's, that's the key thing to keep an eye on. Now, one of the highlights of this uh, pandemic was the need to retool. Uh, we talked about this with you as well. Um, the fact that on the fly, focusing on uh, helping to get ventilators uh, into the marketplace and making components for that became something you guys were working on on the fly. I guess as we get back, I mean, you use that word recovery. As we get back to some kind of normal, in retrospect, um, did it make sense to do that, to, to retool for that marketplace now that you're seeing some signs of optimism in your traditional businesses? Oh, absolutely. Uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, a, a big one being just the, the great morale booster that it was for our people. I mean, you know, as noted, we had thousands of people laid off, you know, things were 
uh, looking very uncertain. And to have something positive to focus on was actually a huge morale booster for our team. And even though you know the number of people involved wasn't anything close to the number that were uh, that were off, I think it made everybody feel good that we had rallied around and that we were doing something to uh, to help our communities. Uh, and at the same time, frankly, medical devices is an area that Lindemar has been exploring expansion into, not specifically ventilators, but I think that what we've learned uh, from this process and some of the vendors that we've and suppliers that we've connected with can be helpful uh, as we continue to pursue our strategy in the medical device uh, area. So I feel like we've learned something. Our, it made uh, our people feel good about what we were doing in, in a time uh, of crisis and gave us something positive to focus on. And, and we did something for a community. So I 100% don't regret uh, doing that. I think it was uh, very positive from a lot of perspectives. You know, you're highlighting a lot of the things that uh, we've been thinking about during this pandemic. It's not just uh, um, CEOs, uh, it's investors, uh, it's society overall on how we might be doing things differently or how we perceive things differently. I mean, I don't have to tell you that in the marketplace, you've now got a company like Tesla, which is worth more than every other automaker on the planet. In fact, it's worth more than a lot of those automakers combined, given the investor excitement around that. And then in this country, during this pandemic and before, you were in constant dialogue with the federal government, often them turning to you for some advice on, on the business side. We are awaiting a throne speech from the prime minister this fall, where it's expected that he's going to, and the finance minister as well, may talk about a green economy. I wonder what your message might be to the, to the prime minister about um, how he's navigating through the recovery and what he might be planning on saying as we get uh, uh, ready for that in September. Yeah, I mean, to me, uh, a, a green uh, environment, a, a strategy that, that's built around green is frankly something that we've been focused on for the last 20 years. So, you know, the strategy, you know, my team uh, laid out 20 years ago was to globalize our business, diversify our business and focus on green technologies. Uh, that's the future, uh, you know, so and we see a lot of opportunity uh, in that sense. So. Uh, you know, I guess that, you know you can approach uh, green in, in two ways: in a punitive way of how do we punish people for uh, you know not doing a good job on the environment, or how do we reward companies that are you know actively developing new technologies, uh, just as we have in terms of electrified vehicles, for instance, uh, that are helping to drive a greener economy. So. Uh, I would obviously tend towards the latter. I mean, I think you get a lot more with a carrot than you get with a stick. Uh, so, you know, encourage more companies uh, to do more in terms of developing green technologies and finding ways to, you know, clean the air, clean the water, uh, and do what we need to for the planet. That's been our strategy for 20 years, and we are, you know, successfully executing on that. I mean, we're winning significant business for electrified vehicles, battery electric vehicles, as well as hybrid, uh, and also actively working on fuel cell electric vehicles and products for that, which we think is uh, is a great technology uh, for the future. So, uh, you know, that's been an active part of what we've been doing for years. And I think that encouraging businesses to do more of that would uh, would make a lot of sense. Linda, always great to get your uh, perspective. Thanks very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Nice talking to you. That's Linda hassan Pratt, CEO of Linamar, joining us uh, on that story of a green economy. Obviously, we've seen